Hi everybody, labor market and labor market themes are commonly assessed in paper three. So it's important that we understand what these themes are and what the micro and macro effects of these themes are ready for if this comes up in paper three. Know that I've done this for a wide variety of topic areas that could feature in paper three. You can find all of those videos in my revision for paper three playlist. But let's dive in, starting with trade unions and the micro effects of trade unions being successful. Well, if they're successful in a competitive labor market, they can drive up wages potentially beyond equilibrium and actually cause unemployment. Whereas in a monopsony, you can talk about how wages can rise, but also employment can rise. So going into those two respective labor markets, excellent micro effects. Know that trade unions can also fight not just for higher wages, but also for non-wage benefits for workers too. For example, fighting for tighter hiring and firing regulation, greater job security, maternity, paternity leave, sick pay and holiday pay, holiday leave, uh, pension plans, all that kind of stuff as well. Non-wage benefits for workers there. But in doing all of this, driving up non-wage benefits and wage benefits for workers, this can drive up cost of production for firms. And from there, you can talk about potentially firms passing that on via higher prices, which can harm consumers and consumer surplus, or you can go down the lower profits road for firms and the consequences of that. On the macro side, we've already talked about the risk of higher real wage unemployment as trade unions might force wages up above equilibrium in competitive labor markets, but also the risk of higher inflation as firms face higher costs, they may pass on those higher costs via higher prices. There's your link to higher inflation as a result of trade union activity. Those higher prices, if that's how firms react to higher costs, can then make exports less internationally competitive, which can then worsen a country's trade and current account balance. You've also got the link to lower growth from trade union activity in two ways here. Whether it's strike activity and the lost output, the lost productivity from strike days harming economic growth, but also you've got the fact that trade unions, by driving up long-run costs for firms, then worsening productive efficiency can harm LRES and constrain long-run potential growth. But also, if the government is a monopsony employer in a variety of labor markets and trade unions are fighting against the government in those labor markets and are successful, then government finances can be worsened as the government has to fork out extra to pay higher wages in these specific labor markets. Let's do the same thing for strike action we can actually go very similar ways. So if strike action is successful and trade unions are getting what they're bargaining for, then make your link again to both wage and non-wage benefits for workers. But more directly, strike action, which means lost output, which means lost productivity, is going to harm firms through lost revenue as their sales take a hit as a result of those strike days. And then that can take you to lower profits for firms as well. On the macro side, worry about the lower growth absolutely from lost output from lost productivity, but also you can go directly to lower living standards if key public services are not functioning correctly, if key services just generally are not on offer, or if consumers, producers can't access key goods that they need on that given day, a link to lower living standards then directly from strike action. You can worry about the impact of government finances from lower growth, yes, from that lost output, from strike days, yes, but also if trade unions are successful in forcing up wages and the government is a monopsony employer, there's another link to worsening government finances there. And if wages are forced up and non-wage benefits also are bargained for by trade unions, which drive up costs for firms, and they react to that by pushing up prices, you've got the inflationary impact you can talk about again. What about immigration? Well, immigration is a big increase in the supply of labor. So if we go into a labor market for a given country, you would simply shift supply to the right. And from that impact, you would then see lower wages and higher employment, a key labor market impact right there. But also migrant labor coming in can drive up efficiency, can improve productivity for firms in the economy. Uh, that's great news for firms seeing a reduction in their cost of production can then link you to higher profitability potentially as well. And this is especially true if migrant labor comes in with unique skills 
or migrant labor uh, is willing to work longer hours or willing to work in evenings and at weekends. That's how you can back up this point. But also the housing market impact is quite interesting. Immigration is an increase in population for a country. So that can drive up demand for housing, increasing house prices, especially if there are constraints on the supply side within the housing market. The jump up of house prices can be quite significant. On the macro side, you've got many links to high economic growth from immigration. The easy way is just saying higher AD from higher consumption. But you've also got higher LRS, potential growth increases, from a higher quantity of labor, a higher labor force size from immigration, but also a higher quality of labor if immigration is boosting productivity. But also if migrants are coming in and setting up businesses, they're passing on their skill set, they're being entrepreneurial, they're investing, they're innovating, you've got links to LRES increasing from that as well. So numerous avenues to get you to higher growth from immigration. The risk of higher short-term inflation is worth talking about if immigration is boosting consumption and boosting AD, but easy to counter that with the long-run effects on LRES uh, reducing inflation over time. You've got the benefits to government finances, migrant labor coming in and working means higher tax revenues collected for the government, but a slight negative could be if key public services are not able to uh, cope with the higher population increases from immigration. Think education services, health services, public transport, and those who rely on those services will see uh, a reduction in their living standards as a result. Also think about how things like road infrastructure might struggle to cope with an increase in population. And now because of all of that, there might uh, then be a greater need for government funding to deal with those uh, pressures, to deal with that population increase and the impact on public services, which can further harm government finances. So there you have it, guys, the micro macro effects of a variety of labor market themes for you. Make sure you're OK with all of these effects, these points, and you can develop these into nice detailed paragraphs. But know that I've done this for a variety of other topic areas in the course. All those videos are in my revision for Paper 3 playlist. Go and check those out and then we're good to go. So thank you so much for watching this video, guys. Can't wait to see you in the next one.